Hello my friends and welcome to the lab. And this is one of the episodes of Inside Out Electronics where we try to build something useful or interesting and this time we are building robotic arm. This is very simple and crude robotic arm but this project already started many times and it changed and it changed so many times as well. So first time I tried to do it back in 2015 so um, about six years it was on and off on and off but what's triggered me to actually continue to working on this project that some little device which I already reviewed in my previous videos this little device is a inside of this servo that's a microcontroller board which replaces your um, typical servo controller board and make those servo talk I, I square C. So now each of those individual servos wired in chain uh, on this wire. Um, this is a little distribution distribution board where they provide beefy power because bunch of servos can consume in this case for maybe about two amps. It's you don't nearly really need these beefy wires like I put here, but that's just whatever piece of wires I had. And all these connectors they are wired in series over I square C bus. So essentially all those servos are on the same bus. You don't have to do bazillion of wires. Obviously it's all crude and just a prototype or two prototype. As you see my payload over here is a very old GoPro camera which I don't care if it is go it's going to be broken and they, this it's connected straight to the servo and it's keeping the desired tool angle. So I use some inverse kinematic uh, library in order to actually do this, essentially this moving into rectangle like this, then goes here, here, here and here and it repeats. That's just a use case to show you. So what's so special about this arm? I wanted to create a robotic arm where I can attach a camera and control my camera position in three dimensions and program my camera movement. So essentially this is my end goal. Right now this is only in two depth of uh, freedom. Uh, you know its end can go only like X and Y essentially and but because these carbon tubes are relatively light so these can reach actually pretty far. Uh, this one is 300 millimeters, this is 280 millimeters and you know it's a uh, almost 600 millimeters uh, reach and it's actually this servo are pretty beefy servos they can handle that those are metal gear a um, quite powerful servos and run right now they are running at 5 volt voltage but I can run them up to 7.2 so they can be pretty powerful at 7.2 uh, I think they can do 16 kilogram a per centimeter which is not super powerful, but still, it's good enough for, particular, for my particular application. So, we can talk about a little, a little bit more in details about all this contraption, and also we can talk about, um, yeah, I want to mention also the history. So, uh, as you see, I'm reusing over here very old uh, rotor from my car. This car doesn't exist anymore, probably, but I still have the rotor. So, I also can come up with the two aluminium angles contraption where I put servo and those I think those are from servocity.com those called Actubotics if I'm not mistaken my god I bought them like ages ago and there is a bearing inside so essentially all this uh, uh, elbow over here uh, this is uh, elbow servo Sorry, this is shoulder servo, that is elbow servo. This shoulder servo is really nicely um, rotating because it has two bearings on both sides. So that's actually make sure that this um, uh, joint is actually quite rigid. So very similar situation over here, uh, but only one side, right? So here's two sides and there is only one side. And uh, here I come up with some 3D printed contraption in order to hold, which is actually not doing too good of a job, uh, to hold this servo and attached camera. Uh, there are a few more 3D printed parts, for example this one and that one, arm holder. As you see it's it just not there, not here, not here, not there. It sort of simulates um, uh, this Actubotics uh, kind of uh, 
I don't know how would you say it, the bracket, let's say, I would say this is bracket in the bearing inside and uh, there is a spline, a uh, adapter. So uh, all this contraption, I also try to simulate in 3D, uh, 3D print. So uh, this, um, this bracket, which actually connects to this carbon fiber uh, arm is a, have a um, necessary interface to connect to this uh, spline adapter. Yeah, so I also uh, 3D printed a whole bunch of a uh, servo, sort of octobotic uh, compatible um, brackets. Oops, brackets. You see, it's quite wobbly just because it's really holding over here in one um, using one of this adapter and this 3D printing 3D printed plate is kind of bendy. So yeah, it's this ideally this has to be a piece of metal and because it's sort of doing good job at the moment but yeah it's already bending so I have to replace this as well but that's what I would like to do I would like to start my build online where um, and share with you my steps so so I'm gonna go from uh, from like this contraption I'm gonna improve things I'm gonna share with you my my findings my ideas my thoughts maybe someone can suggest something and um, I sort of want to have it several series of improvements of this robotic arm so as far as microcontroller goes uh, as you see uh, this is very crude this is chunk of 2x4 and Arduino Duo screwed in uh, doesn't really matter what kind of microcontroller you use, as long as it has a pretty decent um, uh, speed on I squared. Uh, actually, never mind. Doesn't matter what kind of speed. Uh, it, there's no very frequent updates. As long as it have I squared C bus, good. And well, uh, the little uh, controller boards inside servos they are three volt based, so. This Arduino Duo 3V base, I don't have to do any like level shifting in order to make sure everything works together. So the only one requirements, your microcontroller is supposed to be 3 volt or 3 volt can output 3 volts. Um, there is nothing else really too much to talk. I'm gonna continue um, improving the joints over here because as you see, everything is super wobbly. This arm, for example, this joint is actually not even secured. I can just pull it out and that's why it's so it has quite high um, uh, bouncing, it's bouncing like crazy, but it's still, so far, this is just a prototype and still doing its job. I'm using Fabric 2D Inverse Kinematic Library, which is relatively good and works quite well for my particular application. It doesn't require some super fast um, uh, microcontrollers. Pro it actually works very well on this regular Arduino Uno. Not a problem. Um, so, yeah, I tried to use um, Adafruit Itsy Bitsy, but unfortunately with, with that uh, um, Fabric 2D library, it was actually hanging on that particular microcontroller. On any other microcontroller, it was working fine. So there is probably some issue with that specific uh, microcode into, in the microcontroller or something, or libraries has issues with some floating mathematics. I don't know. I assume this is the problem. So I switched to this huge Arduino Duo. So let's talk about a, what's inside this uh, server. So I want to show you and also amplify uh, and also point the importance uh, of um, that, that uh, servo, little servo, smart servo controller because otherwise I wouldn't be able to properly finish my uh, project. Let's switch uh, to different view of the bench. So here we are, this is more traditional view uh, of my bench. Uh, so this is Arduino Duo that, I, Duo that I tried to use for this project, but you can pretty much use any other microcontroller which is 3.3 volt or 3 volt T uh, TTL level compatible. It doesn't have to be Arduino Duo. This one is actually, you have plenty more power of doing it. Arduino Uno can do it perfectly. Why? I'll show you why. So this little microcontroller which replaces this controller inside your servo, you probably recognize this is typical Futaba based uh, connector and this is your typical um, a servo controller. You know, I just cut it off to don't spend too much time kind of unsoldering all that. 
you replace it with this smart controller. So this controller from Status Work, and they do actually run Indiegogo campaign right now to raise some money uh, to pr print more, to print, to make more of these uh, little smart guys. And I'm actually quite fond of them because um, what's, on my opinion, what's very important. First of all, this is a square C bus. On one bus, you can put many a servo so for example if you have 10 servos you're gonna have 10 of these wires coming all over the place to your microcontroller also your microcontroller have enough has to have enough sufficient connectors in order to connect all these jars right each of those data pins has to be connected to your microcontroller yes you can use postwis modulated extenders which talk to microcontroller over i square c bus it's solution it's good solution but it's uh, also not the best solution because you still have to run a gazillion of wires, right? If you use this guy, you're just gonna have uh, four wires, two of them is power and two of them is signal. So that's quite important. Another very important aspect, fire and forget. So instead of just constantly monitoring position of your servo and outputting post modulated signals from your microcontroller, Sorry, forget about position of the servo. Constantly onputting post-vis modulated signals and controlling them by timers of your microcontroller and things like that. You just say, go to this angle, done, and send it over I square C bus. This thing gonna execute it. You can set speed, you can set rate, you can set force, you can set all that fire in one command, fire and forget, and this thing gonna report back when it is done. So it's another very important aspect and a very useful aspect of this microcontroller that you can have position, you can ask for position at any given time, you can have constant position updates of your of all of your servers. When you power it up, uh, your server, you know where it is, what the position it is in. and based on that you can either put it into your operational mode operational position or you can back put it back in park position so without having if you just have this when you power up your server you always have to guess where it is uh, so which makes it very complicated uh, so if you want to have your robot with multiple server working you have to put it in neutral position or some kind of park position before you power it up otherwise it's all be all over the place with this little microcontroller smart i square c uh, server controller you gonna know it because as long as your server responding our uh, i square c bus you know you ask you're gonna know also you can set all sorts of wonderful settings um, i can i don't even know every feature of this particular um, uh, smart server controller but it is really really good and i think it's totally not expensive if you if you are uh, ready to shell out, I don't know, fifty dollars for smart servo, which can talk over I square C or um, RS four nine. Anyways, through some serial bus or I square C bus, this is the solution. You can take your good digital Metal Gear servo, convert it to smart servo chain multiple of them and you can have your smart robot or <laughs> now in this case very smart robot or robotic arm very quickly operational so I re another aspect that obviously because if, if you have many many servers and you're controlling them with your microcontroller you have to have beefy microcontroller to track all of that so you, with this fire and forget essentially fire and forget it will be so so much easier yes you have to care about uh, your power for example if you have a lot of devices chained on a bus and some of the devices or many devices will draw a lot of current you can have level problems so you have to make sure that there is a sufficient wire thickness that not going to be sogging and voltage not going to be sogging that that some of the device is not going to have weird level issues on us or c bus so but that's all can be addressed sometimes bus need require pull-up resistors but that's very easy to arrange so not a problem for example in this case I do not need pull-up resistors. They're still here, but they are not connected here to pull-up resistors. Uh, I was using these for different microcontroller. For example, you need them for other fruit itsy bitsy for some reason. There is a difference. Maybe this guy has internal pull-up resistors, which I maybe even in microcontroller here. 
not external like in, in the microcontroller potentially because uh, I don't see pull up resistors around I square C bus. So here we are. So this is my first re revelation of this uh, camera driving robotic arm which I was uh, working on for quite a long time but now I want to show show this to you um, guys and like first of all I want to share uh, my project I do have some code but this code is really really basic like there is nothing even to share I can refer you to Fabric 2D uh, Inverse Kinematic Library which is actually a really good library and uh, maybe you can contribute maybe you can use it and many people more people using it is it, you know obviously it became better and uh, you can actually try to build uh, something yourself using um, Inverse Kinematic Library servo and if you need even you can use this smart um, smart desk receiver servo controller from Stutterworks. Uh, my goal is to actually uh, redesign 3D printing parts for this robotic arm because this is all pretty much quite flimsy and wobbly and also try to figure out how can I deal with backlashes and there are some good ideas I have maybe reduce speed maybe have uh, slow down the move, servo movement uh, you know when it getting close to the a desired position and uh, things like that uh, yeah then also this uh, library supports uh, 3d positioning so I would be able to maybe have three depths of freedom uh, for this arm uh, hence there is a base zero as you notice uh, so base zero so base zero would, would be able to rotate the whole thing uh, it will be limited obviously because I need probably another uh, joint uh, to and then attach my um, my camera to it but I think in this configuration as of right now it's actually working and here we are some very 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 crude and basic footages from the camera which cap ca which I capture using this robotic arm so and tell me what you think about it and uh, try to emphasize it again if you like those um, uh, the idea about a smart I square C servo controller, go head out and check Indiegogo campaign from StutterWorks.com. All right, see ya in next episode when I continue working my robotic arm on this channel, Inside Out Electronics. So the most important part. Is